Look who's back for more. Woo! Welcome to episode three of the Blood Sisters podcast. I am one of your hosts, Natasha Carr, joined always with Christina Mata and Rachel Cherie. Hi. Hey. How you ladies doing today? I'm great. Good, great, grand, wonderful. <laughs> I love that. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you guys for all of your continued uh, support. Truly, the love that we have been receiving thus far has been overwhelming. Yeah, it's really cool, though. You guys been been getting a lot of really feedback? Pu- yes, I've been so pumped to hear people actually listening and enjoying it. And, like, I've had people saying that they're listening and, like, talking back to it as they're listening. So it's been really super I cool. was surprised to hear that. A couple of people listened at all. So I was like, right. oh, you listen. Yeah, nice. I actually had a Thank surprise you. when I got to work. And one yeah. of my coworkers was like, I listened. I was like, what? To me? <laughs> <laughs> We've had like over a hundred something views on YouTube. And I know to a lot of people that doesn't seem like a lot. But I'm like, over a hundred? That's amazing. Right. That's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. And our Facebook page is at like five or six hundred likes so far. So I mean, we're. Oh, that's wonderful. We're yeah. doing good. That's pretty great. Happy. Thank Thanks, you guys. all. Yes, thanks. Um, and, and as always, guys, we have a really great show for you today. But before we continue, please like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube pages. Um, I've also been informed by a loyal listener and friend, something about ringing a bell. Um, so I'm not used to YouTube and their lingo, but be sure to hit the notification bell. As I was promised, this was a thing. Yes, if you if you hit the little icon, it's a little bell on YouTube. That way, every time we release a new episode, they'll get a notification letting them oh, know okay. yes. to hit us up. Perfect. Shout out to Myra for, for giving me that tip. She was like, yeah, the show's great. Tell them about the bell. I was like, the who? Myra, woo. Good Thank job, you, Sanchez. Myra. Good job. Um, if you also have not already heard, this is really big news. We are on Spotify. Yeah, <laughs> we're in the big <laughs> leagues, guys. Pull out okay. your champagne. <laughs> so we, you can find us on Spotify if you look for Blood Sisters with a Z. That is S I S T E R Z. Now, also, if you watch us or and listen to us on YouTube, you will be able to see this week and our first week's amazing acting uh, reenactments. Sprinkled randomly throughout the show. (laughs) So that's just a little added visual bonus for y'all who watch us on the tube. But Mm -hmm. please listen to us on all platforms as we need to get these numbers up. Yes. Okay. We want to get some sponsors so we can do this full time for you. I'm tired of eating noodles for dinner. (laughs) Oh, huh? You know I'll cook for you. Come on now. Hot water and noodles. Come Um, on now. Rachel loves to cook. I love to cook. We got you. Wasting away. All right, so <laughs> today, y'all, we are back on Ladies Who Kill. Yeah, and we are talking about Christian Gilbert, a.k.a. the Angel of Death. Now, Christian is actually our first ep- um, our first serial killer that we're talking about who is still living, all right? So the name Angel of Death was given to her by a co-worker, uh, and it was usually only uttered as a joke about the craziness that took place in her work shifts, um, and you'll understand shortly throughout the episode, why that was very fitting. I'm going to give too much away about that first. Now, Christian Gilbert, she is a former Veterans Administration nurse. She was born November 13th, 1967, to Richard and Claudia Strickland in Fall River, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Uh, Massachusetts. There it is. Uh, so uh, this whole time, I'm probably going to mis- mispronounce Massachusetts. Uh, Massa- I like Massachusetts. Massachusetts. We can just say that. This is the, that's one of those words. Everybody got that one word. <laughs> Ma- Massachusetts is that word. Oh, for I me. have I many okay. words, but it's okay. Massachusetts <laughs> is one of them. Some people is Worcestershire. It's mm-hmm. right. Worcestershire. Yeah, Worc- that's another one. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Um, so back to Christian. Her father was an electronic executive, and her mother was a part-time teacher when she was not taking care of the household duties. Uh-huh. Now, she had one sibling, a younger sister. I seen somewhere that said she had two, but I think that was just a misprint somewhere. I- I'm going to rock with one sibling. Um, she seemed to have a pretty normal and loving uh, childhood until her teenage years when friends said she became a habitual liar. That is on record that she did suffer from depression, and she started bragging that she was related to Lizzie Borden. Oh, cool. A known serial killer from Fall River, Massachusetts. Really? Did y'all know about oh, this? Oh, that's yes. freaking cool. Okay, now Guess let me what, tell you. though? Let me tell you about Liz. Oh, oh go, go ahead. Go. You got something to add to? You probably got it. Girl. Say it. Because I wanted to take a step back and talk about Lizzie Lou for a minute. Did you got something you want to add? 
I want you to talk about her first, and then I'm going to tell you, because I don't think you have, but I have, but I'm so okay, excited. Okay, I'm do excited. it, do it, do so, it. Now, Lizzie Lou, this is, a, this is like a two-in-one special, y'all. Y'all getting two serial oh. killers for one right now. So, Lizzie Lou was born in 1860, and she was ac- accused of murdering her father and stepmother with an axe. Now, she was a really big deal in this area. She she had only passed 40 years before Christian was born, and they're from a very small town, right? Now, <laughs> she never, it is said that she never liked her stepmother, and she believed that she only married her father for his money, right? And mm-hmm. I, that was after her actual mother had passed. Okay. Now, days before the murder, the sisters were feuding with their father for giving the stepmother's family members property, and he had not mm-hmm. given the sisters property, yeah. right? So the family had become terribly sick days before the murders, and the stepmom, her name was Abby, she thought that the family was actually poisoned because Andrew, who was the dad, he wasn't a very liked man. Now, according to the investigation, Abby was facing her killer when she was attacked. She was hit on the side of her head with a hatchet right above her ear. She fell hard face first on the ground, and then the killer hit her in the head more than 17 times with the axe. Nice. Back of her head. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. So when Andrew returned home, Lizzie claimed that she had helped him remove his boots. But when the police arrived and we look at all the pictures, he was still wearing his boots. Right? Mm. So she lied. That's number one. Now, while the housekeeper was sleeping, she heard Lizzie shouting from downstairs, Maggie, come kid, quick. Father's dead. Somebody came in and killed him. Right? So everybody run downstairs. The dad was on the couch. He was hit 10 or 11 times with the hatchet. One of his eyeballs was split in two which suggests he was sleeping when he was attacked, okay? Now, his wounds were actually still bleeding once the detectives arrived, and the officers felt that Lizzie, well, I'm sorry, not Lizzie. Yep, Lizzie. I was mixing my, my cereal. Lizzie Lou. Lizzie Lou. The officers felt that she was too calm, and she gave contradictory statements. They, however, did not do a thorough investigation, because guess what? Lizzie claimed she was tired. Now they come in there, they see these two bodies. Lizzie's story ain't making sense. Instead of them actually like investigating the crime scene, she's like, I'm tired. They was like, you know what? You're right, man. We she leave. had a long day of murder, and of course she's That's tired. Right. <laughs> right. And the police was like, right. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna leave. We're gonna, right. we gonna let you, we're gonna let you take a little nap. Now she ultimately was acquitted. And and I don't want to go too far into details because this case is like really, really crazy. And we're supposed to be talking about We should Christian. do a separate episode on this. You know what? That'd be cool. We can. We should. Let's do this on Patreon. Yeah. Let's do a Patreon episode. If you subscribe to our Patreon, we will do a Lizzie Borden episode exclusive for Patreon members. Yeah. So you heard it here first, guys. We will create our Patreon account. We'll be linking it to our YouTube pages and our Facebook pages. If you follow that and subscribe, you will get exclusive content, starting with us going into full detail of Lizzie Borden. Let's do it. As soon Next. as we make the, the Patreon, we'll put the info on yeah. our Facebook page, yeah. and you can go ahead and subscribe. Now, did you have something you want to add about Lizzie Lou? Yeah. So, you know, she was saying that she was um, related to her. Mm-hmm. There is um, some other podcast with this man and this woman, um, and they talked about uh, Kristen. And there was someone that commented that they actually are related to her, and her name is in the family Bible. So she wasn't lying. No. See, now that's part of the reason why everyone thought she was crazy when she was younger because she used to say she was related to the woman. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you don't know no goddamn Lizzie. Mm -hmm. But she did know Lizzie. Mm -hmm. I was just... I was just like, well, let's just look through the comments. And I was I was just reading yeah. all the comments. And one comment was, was like, I'm a relative of her, of of Kristen. And um, we are related to to Lizzie. Her name is, is in our family Bible. Families have Bibles? Right. Yeah, like I, family yeah. Bible. Where's mine? I, some, okay, some of those Bibles have like the family tree inside it. Mm. And you can. I mean, mine's. I mean, those, my family's it's, it's from the Mexico, really so it's probably Bibles, <laughs> though. It's it's the really old Bibles. I I, it, it, has, yeah. it has a yeah, family American tree is. inside it, and you can. <laughs> right. You know. Hey, that's crazy. That's really I feel like cool. that's and, a blood sisters also, exclusive. And we also, should find our in, family in, in those histories. Bibles, it'll it'll like you know like name like uh, you're supposed to like name your like your mother and your father and your sister and brother and stuff Earth, like that. Yeah. And that's I have that too. Perfect, perfect. All right, really y'all cool. heard it here. So Christian was related to Lizzie Lou. And if you subscribe to our Patreon again, we're going to go into full details about this Lizzie. Just extra little bonus for y'all for rocking with us. All right, now back to Christian. So she started lying, being manipulative, hostile. She was threatening people. She even threatened suicide a few times when she was very upset. She was ordered to have a psychiatric evaluation after faking a suicide attempt at Bridgewater State College not even a year after she had started at the college. 
So this forced her to change colleges shortly after. She went from Bridgewater to Mount Wachusett. <clears throat> I don't know how to pronounce that. Community College. And Mount, then- <laughs> Mount what you said. What you said. Uh- <laughs> And then eventually, <laughs> in the greatest year ever, in 1988. That's when you were born? That's when I, that's was, when born. I was born, too. That's, that's when I was born, too. That's when I was born. Best year ever. Best year ever. So in 1988, she finally earned her degree as a registered nurse from Greenfield Community College. <laughs> Later that year, in 88 still, she married Glenn Gilbert. Now, things continued to look up for Christian as she landed a job at the vet, at, at the Veterans Administration Medical Center in Northampton, Massachusetts. <laughs> the following year, she and her husband were then able to buy a new home. Now, to her co-workers, Christian was a saint. She loved her job. She made work enjoyable for everyone around her. She gave birthday gifts, hugs when needed. She was amazing and very knowledgeable at her job. Everyone in the C ward where she worked loved her. The couple gave birth to two sons, and after the second, there was trouble in paradise. So Christian started a new uh, friendship with James Peralt. Okay. Friendship. Big Daddy James was a security guard. (laughs) Big Big Daddy! Daddy. Big Daddy James was a security guard at the hospital. You got to watch for them security guards with the batons, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So within a year, Christian was having an affair with James, left her husband and her two kids for this man. She got her own apartment and continued to work at the VA. There was also some alleged domestic abuse from Christian to her husband. It was alleged Mm -hmm. that she was also alleged. Abusing her husband and that also aided in her ultimately cheating on James. I mean, cheating with James and and ending her marriage. Rachel making a very weird face. Yep. Um, <laughs> I wish I wish I could get a nope. picture of that right now. <laughs> right. No. Nope. All right. So that that is it for the background of Miss Christian Gilbert. Kristen is a liar. First of all, she's a liar. She's a, cheat a liar. And a scoundrel. <laughs> she lied and said that. Her husband was abusing her. Mm. My report was that her that she was abusing her husband. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Do you, yeah, but she she do you know that's why? Oh, okay. So you yeah, know, I said she hit him, and yes. she claimed yeah. that she was the one being abused. Yeah, exactly. But no, right. Yeah, my reports was that she actually was the abuser. She made that up that that her husband was abusing her, and then, uh, you know, Big Daddy Perot mm-hmm. told yeah. her. That you can either leave him or I leave you. Did you know he that? He gave her an mm-hmm. ultimatum, right? He gave yep. her an ultimatum yep. and told, but okay, but it was all a lie. And she moved in, she got, a, she left her husband and her child all based on, on just a lie just to be with this man. And, and this Peralt person still don't believe that he's a good man. He still feels like he don't like his character. All because of her. Because she lied. Because if you don't want to be with the man, just say you don't want to be with the man and you want to be with him. She was 28 at the time. He was 25. Liked him a little younger. Don't what can all? he do for you, though? <laughs> I'm, it, and it doesn't matter. Okay, hold on. It doesn't even matter like what he can do for her. That's not necessarily the point. I promise that's not the point. But you're going to leave your husband for this security guard? <laughs> At the so VA hospital. And your and two then, children. And then, and, then, and then you lied on your husband and said that he is abusing you. You made up some story to this man, you know, just so you look good. Just so she looks good. Like, I don't, I don't. Like, I don't. how bad did you want the security guard? She wanted him bad. <laughs> like, this is how bad damn. she wanted him. She started killing folks. Let me tell you about <laughs> it. So. Let's get into it, folks. <laughs> So when she was on duty, when Gilbert was on duty for the seven years she worked at the hospital, it was 350 deaths. 350, and that tripled over the years prior to her being there, which was 1988, for example. In 1989 and 1990, there were uh, 31 deaths, uh, 31 codes called, and Kristen was on duty 
for 22, for 22 of those calls. So <clears throat> prosecutors say that that's unlikely in this one in 100 million that that would happen. Like there's actually some RNs that say that they, they've never called a code at all and they have been registered nurses for 20 and 30 years, okay? So it's safe to say that Kristen was um, the cause of these codes being called and she was the cause of the actual deaths. Even though she was only prosecuted and convicted for four, it was 350 that she was um, in contact with, suspected for. I would say she did. There's no way in the world that uh, the deaths tripled on your years of being on staff. There's there's no way in the world. There's no way that's a coincidence. There's right. no not way. A coincidence. And I read how everybody was so impressed at how every time there was like a crisis in the hospital, she was so calm. Calm, like she reacted cool, so collective, calm. Like a like, cucumber. Don't worry. Nurse Christian here. <laughs> and I can do it. Yeah, she. they said that she had a, a very can-do attitude and a she she was she had a good work ethic as far as as far as they knew and she loved making those codes because at the VA every time a code happened the security guard also had to be pulled into the room yeah, uh -huh. yeah cuz that was that was a part of his contract yeah. Did you know that, she that was, was part able of his to contract show off to big daddy if he worked there for <laughs> It's really cute to hear you say big daddy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that was a part of his contract. He had to answer to those cold calls. That's why he was on staff. Um, he was added to that staff. Like, and that's why he was on staff, to answer those cold calls. Yeah, and staff had actually reported that they saw Kristen and James playing footsie during these codes like mm. she's showing off she's playing footsie with this dude it's it's a date for them yep. they don't one, give a shit about the patient one incident I heard about she she let a, a patient go into cardiac arrest I'm not necessarily sure which patient it was it, it, I just couldn't find it but anyway this patient went into cardiac arrest and she let them like suffer and she waited for her coworkers to find the patient. And then she acted very concerned. Playing with lives. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So ultimately she wanted the attention of a uh, parole. So from my understanding, Kristen killed four people or she was convicted of four they feel like she killed way more than that, at least at least 80 more, even though it says 350 died on her watch or, or around her watch. So one of the, I feel like, is a special person that she um, killed, was involved in his, his death, was uh, Henry Hudden. Um, Henry was one of the four murdered, and he died at only 35 I'm going to tell you why he was only 35 at the VA hospital. So Henry um, was in a um, bar fight, and he, he was in a bar fight. He was trying to stop the fight. He wasn't necessarily involved in the fight because um, he was just one of those people to uh, be a good Samaritan, I guess. Okay, so... <laughs> Henry was in the fight at, at the bar and he hit his head and then he hit the floor and it caused him to um, go into a coma for three weeks. Mm. Yes. So that's why he was in the hospital in the first place, because he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Mm. He would have fits. He would be mad all the time. He would have emotional breakdowns. He just wasn't there anymore. Mm. So that's why he was in that hospital in the first place. At 30 something. At 35, 35 years old. Mm. 35. Now, I know I was also reading for her to get uh, Jane's attention uh, on September 26, 1996. That's when she first started, uh, Jane started receiving phone calls that someone was saying they planted bombs throughout the hospital. That was also another way for her to try to get his attention. 
But she started saying that there were bomb threats or she started like planting the bomb threats. She actually did it one day and then the next day. And then a few days and then, later. And then a few days mm-hmm. later. So yeah. she was already being investigated. Right. It was a way to and that's derail why, the, the Right. She, she was trying to she was trying to just de- derail the entire mm-hmm. thing. She was they were they were on to her. She actually went to a, a psychiatric hospital a I don't know how many times she went to a psychiatric hospital, but she would go between one day or no, no one week. And I think like three weeks, she would go to the psychiatric hospital just to derail the investigation. So her other victim, his name is Kenneth cutting. He was also a member of the, the uh, VA hospital. Um, Kristen injected Kenneth and Henry with well, how you say it again? You gotta do, do epinephrine. That <laughs> she injected both of these people with epinephrine, and that's why they died in the first place. Uh, they were they died of cardiac arrest. Most of her patients that that died on her watch, it was because of cardiac arrest. This um, this medicine will go in their systems and and cause their hearts to pretty much stop. But it's hard to trace. However, when they did do the autopsies, it was very easy to see that they had too much of it in their systems. I seen one guy, she removed his breathing tube. We talked about him. Do you remember which guy that was? I'm not sure which one it was that she removed her, his, his breathing tube. (laughs) She was trying to get Ross attention then too. Mm -hmm. So, she, she she removed the breathing tube, left the room, and just left him there to die. Yeah. She is a very evil person, in my opinion. And it's, it's nothing else but evil. I know a lot of her, like, her excuse for injecting these people with the ep- epinephrine was she would grab the ampule of the epinephrine and tell them like oh i have to flush your veins so she would you know have an excuse for taking the syringe and putting that into their iv bag oh i have to flush your veins and she would just inject them with that she did the same thing to her husband yes in 1995 Mm -hmm. she Injected her husband with the same thing, and it was at she the house was, too. It wasn't it was, even it was at the at hospital. Their house. Right, it was at, it was at their house. She was trying to. Uh, like he, he was in the hospital shift. for like for poison <laughs> in the first place, um, because she put something in his food. Mm. He said his food tasted weird, so he didn't even want to eat after Allegedly, her. Allegedly, it was potassium. <laughs> Sounds like Nanny Doss. Uh, <laughs> yep. uh, she uh, put something in his food. He didn't want to eat the food. He said the food tasted weird, so he didn't even want to eat her dinners or whatever. But. He was he was hospitalized for food poison, and she didn't like the way they were taking care of him when she came home from work one day. And so she had syringes, and she was trying to inject him, but she said it wouldn't work. So she stopped. She was trying to get, like, a blood sample or something, and mm-hmm. she was she like, said, well, She said that she was going to take a blood sample. Mm-hmm. But she had to flush his to veins work. first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she said she was going to take a blood sample to work so, that, so she can figure out what was wrong with him. Um and she, but it, for some reason, it just w- it wouldn't work that day. Maybe she was a little too nervous um, when uh, when she was trying to take when she was trying to like poison this man. Yeah. So the husband had actually passed out after she had quote unquote flushed his veins, and when he woke up, she said to him, "Oh, you probably passed out at the side of the needle." At the side <laughs> of the needle. <laughs> and he was just like, "Nah, uh, I don't nah, think so, honey bunny. <laughs> nah, you did something to me." Oh goodness. Um another um victim name was Edward Edward Skiwa. Uh Squira? Squira? S K W I R A Squira. He was 69. And you know what? Yeah, he was. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, um there is like contradicting information on Edward. Something says that he's 66. Another says that he's 69. Mm. So I'm not sure if he was 66 when he entered the hospital. But Mm. she also 
killed him. However, he was in the hospital for alcoholism. Um, none of the patients were there. I feel like they weren't there um, to die at all. Like none of them were close mm -hmm. to death. Henry was not close to death. He just had some some psychological issues. Um, Kenneth wasn't close to death. And Edward wasn't either. The only person that that had like some issues, like more issues, was uh, Stanley. And um, Stanley tried to kill himself like years before he had got to the hospital. That's why he was there in the first place. He tried to kill himself by drinking Drano. And mm -hmm. so he had bowel I issues. So mm -hmm. he had um, a feeding tube inserted in him. However, all of his issues didn't require injections at all. It, all, all all of his issues were just uh, he just needed pills and tablets and yeah, stuff and like that. Yeah, and it wasn't really related to heart issues, which it was, was what he ultimately died of. None of I yeah. none of their issues were related to their hearts. Right. It was just mostly related to their minds because they were mostly veterans like of wars mm -hmm. and um, some trauma there. Right. It was just it was yeah. just trauma. It wasn't anything that had to do with their with their with their heart or anything. Yeah. That was going to stop them from breathing or anything. And she, worked she in just the, killed them the because ICU. she wanted some attention. Right. She worked in Ward C, which was the ICU. And all those those men ended up being admitted to the ICU for one point or another. And they just never left. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Henry was in the ICU because he would do things like. Um, he would go through spells, you know, he was a schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. So he would go to the hospital. He would admit himself. Mm -hmm. He would go and, and get new medication and stay for a week to three weeks and then go back home. And one day when he went back home, his mother knew that he was uh, sick besides the schizophrenia. Like he had the flu and he needed to go back to the hospital. And she told him to tell the hospital that he had, um, swallowed a bunch of pills and he drank a bunch of beer behind it so that they wouldn't say that they were, you know, crunched for, uh, for residents. They wouldn't say that mm -hmm. they didn't have any room. Sure. They would make room for him. Mm -hmm. But they, uh, they didn't take him to where he normally would go to ward seven. They took him to ward C, which was where Kristen was. Mm -hmm. And he just so happened to become her patient that day. And, you know, his mom blames herself. Mm. She's the reason I went there. Yeah. Yeah. She, I know she blames herself. He had a history of just leaving the hospital. Yeah. He had a, yeah. He would, he would leave, against go back to his, his apartment, like mm -hmm. go back to his apartment, like nothing ever happened. And, you know, come back whenever he felt like he needed to. Mm -hmm. But when he was in that hospital, he told his mom, he was like, please do not leave me here. I don't want to die. I don't want to die here mm -hmm. and he was just like everybody knows the patients know the staff know the staff is talking to the patients about it they all know people die here mom mm -hmm. it became that's why she got that name angel of death because it was a joke that they would actually crack right and and they they cracked that joke like way in the beginning when mm -hmm. when it was when it was almost coincidence you know mm -hmm. like oh but they knew something was up because too many people started dying on her shift. Yes, after that third one, when the nurse had found her, when the nurse found that um, that she went into Stanley's room with with the syringe and he didn't need syringes at all, mm -hmm. that's when the bells went off in her head. Yeah, and yep. she saw that there was empty syringes in the trash can too. Two extra empty syringes in the tra in the trash can, and she also noticed that. Cause she's <laughs> this nurse actually was the one that did the count of mm -hmm. the medicine that uh, she afternoon. Did the she did the inventory and she noticed that there was three in the inventory. And then when um, when uh, Stanley went into cardiac arrest, there was absolutely none there. Mm -hmm. So she said she said her heart dropped and she she knew it it had to be Kristen that that did it. And then back to um, Henry as well, since he had such a, a history of leaving the hospital against medical advice, the doctor had actually called the mom and let him let her know Henry's gone. And she was so used to him leaving. She said, oh, OK, he's gone. He left the hospital. Mm. Let me give him a call and I'll, I'll get him to come back. 
And he goes, no, like he's gone, like he's dead. Oh my God. And that's how she was notified of his passing. She, she thought he ran away again. She thought he just yeah. ran away. Ran and she away would like again. meet him at his apartment. This day that he he went to the apartment and then had to come back, it's almost like she remembered it like it was yesterday. Mm-hmm. She um, The hospital called her, hey, Henry left. She said, okay, I'll go get him. She went to his apartment. She brought him groceries, but she knew that he was still sick. So she took him back to the hospital. But she said, she said that... It, after he passed away, she had him then pack up all his things and put his name on his bag. And, and she said she was so sorry that she brought him down there that day because she was the one that told him to tell them that he had um, swallowed a bunch of pills and drank a bunch of beer behind it so they wouldn't say that they were crunched, for, you know, for space because she wanted him to get the help. However, she didn't know that he was going to be admitted to ward c of course you're admitted to a hospital you're not expected to be released into (laughs) the care of a serial killer so she tried to do what she thought was best for him i i get i get both both sides of that i i get like why she was trying to do what what was best for him i get why she feels like she's at fault too Mm -hmm. she yeah she, she is the one that told him to tell them what he did and and he didn't do that at all but she just wanted him to get help so I, I do see both sides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How was the nurse, uh, the angel of death, I should call it, how was she eventually caught? So um, as we kind of went over earlier, the hospital staff started to become suspicious after noticing that Kristen's patients were having issues with cardiac arrest. And there was also an issue with the epinephrine supply at the hospital. So one of the nurses actually started keeping track of the epinephrine supply. She took an inventory before going on a vacation and then took track after she came back from her vacation and noticed that a significant amount was missing from the supply. And there was really no one on the floor that would have needed that much at the time. Um, As a matter of fact, um, during the year from 95 to 96, when she was committing the most of her murders, the VA could not account for 88 of the 135 ampules of epinephrine that were used. Oh my God. So that means she used a, a, around 47 ampules on Jeez. patients just trying to either induce heart attacks or what have you, whatever she was trying to do with this epinephrine. She was just being liberal with the epinephrine just oh taking gosh. as much as she wanted i mean today it, it's it's much different today than it was then you right. know you could go to the floor of a hospital and grab whatever medication you needed now you can't um, do it. you got to scan that stuff right now. you got to scan it in it keeps a very mm-hmm. specific inventory you have to go through someone else who administers the medication back then she could just go into a room and grab whatever she wanted Mm. Um, so that nurse had actually discussed her concerns with two other coworkers and all three of them went to their supervisor. So this nurse did her research before coming forward to the supervisor and saying, Hey, I noticed this. I did my research on this and I've noticed that there's this much epinephrine missing. There's an issue here. Um, there was three people that rang the alarm on her. Yes. Three. Yep. So the hospital eventually did start an investigation on her and noticed that there was a spike in deaths during her work hours. Um, Between 1995 and 1996, there were 106 deaths. Okay. So of those 106 deaths, 63 of them were in Ward C, Mm. which is where she worked. 44 of those 63 were in the evening Mm. and 37 of those 44 deaths were deaths that Kristen Gilbert was present for. So you can't really fight that data. She was there for a huge majority of those deaths. Mm -hmm. That is so evil. So, of course, you know, you think that that seems like a huge number. Like, why wouldn't they have noted this, noticed this until now? Of course, when you're doing an autopsy, as Rachel noted or had mentioned before, you're really not going to know while doing an autopsy 
um, the difference between like natural and s- synthetic adrenaline. Epinephrine is basically synthetic adrenaline. Mm-hmm. So when they're doing an autopsy, they may have seen that there was an increase in adrenaline, but they didn't really necessarily think to look, was this synthetic? Right, was right, this right. injected? And so they said they it was really looked over. A, an extreme amount of epinephrine in two of the victims. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to fight that they all died of natural causes. Right. Yeah. So during the investigation, they actually decided to exhume four of the bodies um, that died of cardiac arrest while under her care so that they could look for evidence of being injected with epinephrine. Those ended up being the four victims that we talked about today, um, which was Stanley Jagodowski, Henry Hudon, Hudon, uh, Kenneth Cutting, and Edward Squira. So uh, they're conducting an investigation. Kristen gets wind of that investigation, and she decides to go on a work leave <laughs> She Mm -hmm. says that she has a shoulder injury and she's going to go on a leave. Um, So, I mean, it was kind of a win-win at this point. Like she's no longer at the hospital to take care of any of these patients. So it was good for the good for the VA. Right. And it was also good for her in a way because she was no longer there during her leave. She had actually committed suicide and ended up in a psychiatric hospital. Um, During her time at the psychiatric hospital, she called her BF James and told him, quote, you know, I did it. I Mm. did it. You wanted to know I killed those guys. So she admitted to him over the phone while she's in the hospital that she had murdered those people. Um, After being released from the hospital, she did try to keep tabs on the investigation as much as possible through James. So she would ask James, you know, he's still working at the VA. Mm -hmm. She's trying to get information as much as possible. Like who's saying what about me, what's going on. Um, As soon as she learned that James was cooperating with investigators, she became more aggressive and they started fighting more. um, And James did claim that, Kristen had actually tried ramming into his car during an argument. Um, So as he continued cooperating, his car would continue to keep getting damaged. (laughs) Stop talking. (laughs) Stop talking. I'm going to keep messing up your shit. Stop bitching and I'm going to stop messing up your shit. Right. So finally, in September of 1996, James took a call from someone at the VA while he's working who claimed to have planted planted three bombs mm-hmm. within the hospital. Of course, their protocol states that they had to evacuate all the patients. The police were called. They had to investigate it. Of course, no bombs were found, but it was a huge hullabaloo. And of course it, it was Kristen trying to derail the investigation against her. Um, the voice on the telephone call was described as Husky. And it seemed to be computer generated. That's a rude shit. Call my voice right. husky. Co- husky, right? <laughs> like, how do you sound husky? So she had one of those like kid devices. Okay. There's a bomb so, in the building. Oh yeah, bomb. <laughs> you have two hours. Right. So, what they did was they traced the calls to a payphone, and they started surveilling the payphones in the area. Uh, right, of course, since Kristen decided to use a payphone, um, she she called the first day, she called the day after, and she also called a few days after the second one. So while surveilling the payphones, um, they actually saw Kristen drive up to a payphone and make a call um, while one of the cops saw her making a f- a call after she got back in her car and drove away, he called the hospital and said, did you just get another bomb threat? And they said, yeah, Mm. we did. He goes, Kristen just made that call. So they also took prints off of that payphone, which matched with hers. Yes. So (laughs) of course, uh, a theme that we've been seeing in some of our past episodes is that these people have been 
getting caught for things other than their actual murders. Yep. So this woman <laughs> did this shit to incriminate herself, right? So they had enough evidence to get a search warrant for Kristen since they had the evidence that she had done these bomb threats. Mm-hmm. Of course, Kristen Gilbert denied that there was any sufficient evidence to search her home, but tough shit. They had a search warrant. They were going to search her house. Mm. They got in, in the pocket of her coat, they found an instruction manual for a device that actually changes your voice. And in the closet, they found a talk boy. Now, if anyone remembers talk boys, <laughs> they were popular around the time of Home Alone. Some kid mm. shit. That's yes. That's what I thought. Some kid shit. <laughs> you could get them at Toys R Us. R.I.P. Like KB Toys. <laughs> R.I.P. as well. <laughs> Basically, I remember the talk boy came out and then I had a talk girl, right? Because it was mm-hmm. pink and I liked having the talk girl. But um, she literally used a talk boy to, dis- <laughs> to disguise her voice. Um, they were actually able to also trace the talk boy to a toy store where she had purchased it. Um, so they had also found a book of poisons. I had read in a few different articles that they found that book of poisons at her apartment. I'd also read that they searched the husband's home and found it there. Mm. Um, that was still worth her things that were there. Um, either way, they found a book of poisons that had um, a page on epinephrine dog eared and also a page on potassium, which was dog eared, which we were kind of suspecting that she might have, put potassium in her husband's food. She definitely right. did. Right. As a way to... She tried to kill him. Right. Mm-hmm. Putting she potassium. went after him with a knife, too. <laughs> she did. She went after her husband with a knife. No potassium shame. is a lot cleaner. Mm-hmm. I go the potassium route. Yeah. Personally. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't be bloody? You know, it depends on my mood. If I feel like cleaning... It depends on yeah. what they've done to you. If I yeah. feel like cleaning. Yeah. And if... The if, knife if, is more messy. Also, if if they're the bigger the asshole they are, the more you really want to get bloody. Yeah, you want to watch them slowly mm-hmm. suffer. You want to watch the light just fade from their eyes. Mm-hmm. Strangulation. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> back to the point. Um, she was able to get charged with making the bomb threat, and that's why she was arrested ultimately. Um, everyone was relieved in a way that she was put away because of her attempts to intimidate many people within the investigation. Um, she had apparently, you know, tried to intimidate her coworkers. She tried to kind of convince people not to say anything against her. Mm-hmm. Um, so she did ultimately go to trial for the bomb threats mm-hmm. and was sentenced to 15 months. So mm-hmm. during the imprisonment for that, she attempted suicide again and was admitted for an evaluation. And that is when she was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sexy. Right. So um, later on, the second trial actually happened for the actual murders. That was in November of 2000. Um, that was when she finally went to trial for the actual murders. Um, a fun fact about this trial was that Massachusetts, or should I say Massachusetts, had actually yeah, abolished <laughs> capital punishment in 1984. Mm, but. But big butt here. Big butt. Uh, cannot lie but (laughs) cannot lie since the crimes happened on federal Federal. property Mm -hmm. the prosecutors were allowed to seek the death penalty for Kristen (laughs) so some of the arguments that the prosecutors used during the trial was that Kristen started or instigated her own emergency situations at work purposefully so that she could show off her nursing skills to James her BF, um, as security had to be called into any emergency situation. Um, she also enjoyed the thrill of medical emergencies and had tried stating that these four victims had no history of health conditions or heart conditions. She tried falsifying medical documents stating that they did. So that was another, another charge against her. James actually did testify against her in court mm-hmm. and shared the information from earlier that she confessed to the murders while she was in the hospital. And also 
fun fact that um during one of our one of our victims kenneth cuttings Mm -hmm. um she had actually met james for a date after the death of kenneth cuttings so she went to the charge nurse on her shift during that day and actually asked the nurse so if kenneth dies can i get out of work early what she did that she was like she actually planned for that to happen. So she can get off work. Mm-hmm. So she could so get she off can go work and go on a date. date. Have, on a mm-hmm. da- have a date, yeah. She did that Ooh, on purpose. Like she, she knew she mm-hmm. was going to kill him. She knew she was going to kill him. And she, that's why she did that. She, <laughs> that's the one. I. That's the one. That's too good. She like, wanted to go on a date. And so she was talk just about like, I'm going to kill, right. nah. kill this man since he's my only patient for the night. And I'm going to go. Right. That was her only patient. She literally said, if Kenneth dies tonight, can I get off of work early? And she was like, well, I I guess. Yeah. And he was dead within 40 minutes. So she got to get off of work and she got to go see James. With Henry, he was dead within 45 minutes Mm. of his mother leaving the hospital. She didn't waste any time. She didn't waste any time. Mm -mm. So that was plenty (laughs) Plenty of evidence against her. Um, in March of 2001, she was found guilty on one count of second degree murder and three counts of first degree murder, as well as two counts of attempted murder. Now, um, the jury had actually, after they found her guilty, they had to deliberate further uh, as to what her sentence would be. And it took two days to deliberate. They did decide to give her life in prison as opposed to the death penalty because of her children. Um, they, I, I don't know if it was the, the lawyers or her family stated that, you know, it would devastate the family if she died. Her children would have to grow up without a mother. So they did decide to go ahead and just give her the life sentence um she was given four consecutive life sentences with no chance of parole um a fun fact about this actually was that she tried to appeal Mm -hmm. her her sentence in 2003 Mm -hmm. but after learning of a supreme court ruling um which would have allowed prosecutors to pursue the death penalty again um if there had been a retrial she dropped that appeal. Okay. <laughs> Said, y'all ain't finna get me. Right. <laughs> and she's currently at the Federal Medical Center at Fort Worth, Texas. Wow. Where she will probably stay for the rest of her life. Mm-mm, good old Christian. Now, question. If you were Henry's mom, would you feel guilty? Yes. Yes? Why? Because I'm the one that took him there. I'm the one that took him to the hospital. I'm the one that told him to tell the doctors that he that I took all those fi- pills, 50 pills actually, and, and drank a 12-pack of beer. But he was literally probably going to end up being end a up, harm to himself. He, maybe. He maybe. was going out and picking fights. So, And that's the thing when it comes to mental illness. Like Those who are close to you, they know, like, all right, we're not going to react too, too harshly because we know there's something... There's something that's that you're not in control of. Well, but if that, he met that somebody on the he street, had into, he, had, I mean, he was he just was being like, a good Samaritan. But, right. but still, Henry still, he had a personality disorder. So he we don't did. know how he was interacting with people on the street. I still, I, I feel like I still would feel guilty. Would you feel guilty? Um, I would feel a little guilty. But in the at the end of the day, I knew that I was trying to do what was best for him. I was trying to do whatever I could to get him admitted to get the help that he needed. Right. He was supposed to be in trusted hands. When you go to a medical facility, when you go to a hospital, you're supposed to be taken care of by medical professionals. And that was not something that she could help. True. She right. released him into the hands of a murderer, but she did not know that she literally mm-hmm. released him into a hospital where he's supposed to get the utmost best care. And he was only supposed to go to war C to settle his stomach. Yes, it was just supposed to be to. It wasn't even to get him to in the clear. Be, he wasn't even supposed to just be there. He was right. going to just be there just to settle his stomach, and then he was going to go to Ward Seven because his sister had to calm him down. His mother had to calm him down about being in Ward C because you know he went mm-hmm. when he found out he was going to Ward C with Kristen. He went crazy. 
Like he went batshit crazy. It was like, uh, excuse me, do not leave me here. Please don't leave me here. Which makes he me even wonder. said to his mom, I know I'm a nut, but please believe me this time. Mm-hmm. Which is unfortunate. I mean, shit. Like, what do you do for your child at that point? That makes me wonder, though, if he was freaking out about being in Ward C, was it a thing among the patients? Where they knew if you end up in Ward C, you yes. don't get out? he said it. He said, he said, the patients know, the staff know, the staff is talking to the patients about it. I mean, do you think then the blood that's on Christian's hands should be shared with the hospital and the staff? Because, I mean, if all of you guys are aware of this, it's so much so that you're cracking jokes instead of doing something. Right. Y'all could have done something a long time ago. It took so long for someone to actually do something. Yeah, it took seven one years nurse is a long time. Seven years with is actual a long critical time. thinking skills to mm-hmm. do inventory on the medicine yep. to realize what was going on. Would you on. feel guilty, Tasha, if you was Henry's mom? No, only because, again, I'm sending my, my son. I'm doing what I think is best for him. Right. At this point, I, I, I I'm not trained in this. You're having a mental breakdown. Clearly, I don't know what to do to help you. I'm sending you to people who I think are supposed to help you. Would I feel horrible? Absolutely. But at the same time, I couldn't go to sleep every night knowing that you probably won't be able to even come home to me because I don't know what the hell you out there flipping out and doing at home. He probably would have, even though she lied and said, hey, tell him that you took this many pills. Mm -hmm. Who's to say he wouldn't eventually have taken those pills too? Right. So I, I don't think I would feel guilty, but I would want blood. Like, I'm trying to be Christian ass at this point. You're right. She need her ass beat. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. She need her ass beat. Um, so Christian, angel of Dove Gilbert, she's still living, still locked up, never to see the light of day, most likely. Um, it's a, it is disgusting, like we talked about, that she took advantage of these people who trusted her and looked to her uh, to help them in their time of need. She definitely deserves to spend her last years locked up. She took an oath as a nurse to protect these people, and instead she inflicted pain and suffering all to get attention. And a lot mm-hmm. of times to get attention from a man. From a dude. Dude. Like, you don't need that. Okay. Girl, put like, on the halter top and walk down the street. And walk down right. The street, right. You <laughs> don't need easy. a Bia for that <laughs> affirmation. She wanted James Peralt. Peralt. Big Daddy JP. Okay. She needed to get out outside of the VA. There's plenty okay. of men outside of the VA. That you don't have to work that outside hard of work. to get their attention. You don't have to inflict death upon she others. she was seeing dollar signs. You know, you know, Peralt wanted to be a real officer. Oh. A he real officer. Flight. Yeah. I know the world, Craig. Yeah. Okay, Peralt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to this week's cold-hearted question. Boom, boom. Cold-hearted question of the week. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Mm. Oh, God, I like that. We're doing it every week. That's our cold heart of the week theme music. Perfect. Now, if the man or woman, for those male listeners, if the man or woman that you were, or for women listeners, too, like mm-hmm. women, all right, we open, all right? For whoever you are, whoever, whoever you're you attracted are, to. Whatever you want, we love it all. Mm-hmm. Now, if the man or woman you were obsessing over even uh, left your husband or wife or left you on red, ghosted you, and was your and this we're not saying this is what James did, but it was just our question. <laughs> he left you on red. He he or she left you on red. Ghosted you, and and this is the man that uh, or woman that you left your actual wife and husband for. But you have to see this person forty plus hours a week at work. What drastic over the top measures would you take to get this person's attention back on you? Because the silence is driving you crazy, and you want this attention. Desperately, what would you do? Oh, I don't. I don't play games. I would just ask them straight up, like, "I did all this shit. Where the hell are you? Oh, oh, are you right? Like, I'm not gonna try to just get your attention by playing a game. Mm. I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna stage a death at a hospital to try to get you in the same room as me. Like, I'm going to just hit you up and say, "What's the deal?" Like, oh, do you want something or no? Okay. If you don't, then I'll just know to move the fuck on. Now, Christina's very adult and mature about this. <laughs> and I, 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 I look up to you. Well, like, obviously, <laughs> it's like I didn't want to be with my husband that much because I true. left someone for you. True, 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 true. And if you're going to be a dick, then I just need to move on to someone that's better than both of y'all. Period. That's it. Period, that's it. Who? Now, my crazy ass, um, <laughs> if, we, if we're in this setting, like a hospital, 
I would find a way to get close to someone who you love and value, like somebody that is like really near and dear to your heart, or mom, a grandmother, or auntie. Now, if it's the VA, of course, I have to find like somebody in your family who's a vet that you love. But just let's just say for sake of this <laughs> argument, it's a traditional <laughs> hospital. <laughs> Okay. okay. I'm, I'm going to find somebody that you value. I'm going to get close enough so that I can slowly start poisoning them. Okay? Now, not not uh, enough oh. to kill this person. <laughs> to make them enough, sick. Yes. Okay. To make them Cause some sick. Concerns, so you have to be alarm. at the hospital. Exactly. Gotcha. With me. Gotcha. You see what I'm saying? So as soon as they get sick, I'm going to make sure that I'm their nurse and I treat them so damn good that they start worshiping me, all right? So every time you see them, they bragging about, oh, Nurse Car, she was this, she was that. How much they love me. I took such good care of them. I'm even pop up. The way you take care of my daddy is so hot. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to pop up once in a while after they release. I'm still bringing them food and clothes and little toys and trinkets and shit. Oh, okay. we're going to be best friends. You see what I'm saying? Because every time you go over to see them, oh, that damn Nurse Car, you know she brought me some chicken noodle soup today. And every time you go over there, you done ghosted me, but I am so heavy in the person who you love and respects life that they going to keep on reminding you how fucking amazing I am. You know, nurse card would be making ramen. But exactly. <laughs> and after a while, I would hope that these, this person who you love and respect so much, they keep bragging about me. You can be like, let me stop ghosting her. Let me call a nurse card. You mm-hmm. right. She helped you out. You would be dead right now because we don't even know why you sick. All along, I've been poisoning your right. ass. All right? Nobody know. Now, if if I do all of this, and because, of course, if we're at this level, I'm obsessing over you. So I need your attention right now. You need. ignoring me is driving me crazy. So I'm going through drastic measures. Now, if this does not work, I don't want to see you happy with anybody else. So at that point, I'm just going to lock you up in the basement. Because if I can't have you, can't nobody else have you either. That's right. Oh Period. my! I, I I wish I could be all mature, mature like Christina. And if you don't want me, someone else will. No, you don't want me. You, I'm gonna make you want me. Or you ain't gonna have nobody else. I like the idea of keeping them in the basement. That's pretty cool. It is cool. Yeah. Have a little dungeon set up and yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Let's do a dungeon of men. Oh. And women. I'm, we're open. I'm down. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Who wants to be our prisoners? Prisoners yeah. of love. We only can feed you one meal a day. Yeah, we got that ramen. We got, we got yeah, ramen we got student loans to pay off. We have very um, expensive private educations that we're trying know, to take care of. I don't necessarily know what I would do to get anyone's attention. But I do feel like I would call in bomb threats and shit like that. Okay. I do feel like I would do some stuff like that. Just gotta because it. Yeah. you, I mean, you have to trace it to me. So I'm gonna make sure I'm somewhere where you can't trace it to me. Right, like don't keep going to the same damn pay phones. Right. I'm what gonna go was to the library doing? or something. Did they like, not have burner phones right. back? Oh, probably not. Never probably mind. not. I'm sorry, I forgot oh. what time from. <laughs> I would, I would definitely go the to the 90s. library. And be like, uh huh, it's a bomb in your building. Bye. <laughs> Bye. With our husky voices, it's a bomb in your building. <laughs> And I call back the next day. It's a bomb and you built it <laughs> for real today. <laughs> I know I said it yesterday, but I'm for real right now. Go check and the bathroom. She's, the one thing, one of those threats, she said it was three bombs in the building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she did. She I said, I planted stressful, three bombs in the building. Yep. And she gave them a time limit. It was like, you have like two hours or something or everyone will be dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, hearted angel of death. She Christian didn't play games. Gilbert. Well, guys, that will do it for this week's episode of Blood Sisters Podcast. Ooh, 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 Arsenio Hall. Oh, my God, we're so old. Why did I crack the joke? Um, <laughs> As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification thingy. Ooh, ding, 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 ding. Thing. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell that friend. And also share, 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 share. Be sure to check out this week uh, in episode one on our YouTube channels. As, uh, again, we talked about, you'll be able to see our very cool reenactment scene sprinkled throughout the show, but also listen to us on Spotify. So, yes, listen to the show twice. Is that amazing? Thank you. YouTube Thank you. and Spotify. Okay. okay, thanks. Yeah. So, again, I am Natasha Carr with Rachel Cherie, Christina Mata, flirting with darkness and premier, uh, promoting <laughs> weird brown girl joy. Until Bye. next time. Bye. Peace. You are listening to the Blood Sisters Podcast. We 
coming to you live and direct. You are listening to the Blood Sisters Podcast. We coming to you live and direct. <laughs> <laughs>